Okay guys, so I've been thinking about doing this video for a little while and I thought it might be a really interesting video kind of to go over and kind of explain, at least in my opinion, what I think are the essential items to put together for a bushcrafting backpack, kind of load out. And I know in this modern day we carry a lot of stuff and a lot of nice stuff that is certainly helpful and all that but this is breaking it down to <clears throat> what are the bare essentials that i would consider for bushcraft and what will help you to ultimately <clears throat> practice bushcrafting in the best ways or to help make your bushcrafting experience the best so without any further ado tigers Please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you want to become a Taiga. <laughs> and now let's jump into it. Okay guys, so I have a whole bunch of stuff and I'm going to do a little pan of all this stuff so you guys can see it. But the tarp is right below me and I'm just going to pull this stuff up. So starting off with the backpack. Now I want to give a little bit of a recommendation for the backpack. <clears throat> now this one of course is my stripped down. Uh, camel back linchpin. I stripped it down for the video, but uh, I've tested a lot of different packs and pack loadouts uh, in my <clears throat> expansive time being a bushcrafter. And the three companies that I like, while it doesn't necessarily matter, and you do want to ultimately find the best. Uh, pack to carry your gear in for the price that you can afford but the top three brands for me are Maxpedition, Camelback, and Mystery Ranch. Now I like Maxpedition because they do a lot of very high quality gear and if you're looking for things like sling packs or kind of more specialized or different types of packs I would definitely recommend checking out Maxpedition and Camelback and Mystery Ranch are just they make really great products and their gear is very tough and it withstands the test of time I know I have a couple Camelback packs and a whole bunch of different like water bladders and stuff that they make all of it's very impressive all of it has withstood all, many years of brutal use so <clears throat> as far as packs go, that's kind of my recommendation. So cutting out all the BS of in drama of survival, and like I said, survival is a little bit of an overglorified market. There's so many cool things you can get, and there's a lot of, like I said, hyped up stuff, but stripping it down to the bare essentials for practicing true bushcraft, these are it. So starting off, I'm gonna go with the bare essentials that I recommend just having in your pack as a beginner. Now, it doesn't have to look this nice, but the first part is having a good, solid, sturdy fire kit. Now, this is my fire kit. It was originally made by MCQ Bushcraft, really awesome channel here on YouTube, and it has everything from birch bark, amadou, tinder quick, and just a whole plethora, a myriad truly, of <clears throat> fire starters. That is my number one go-to thing. Now, I do want to note this is, doesn't have any fire steels or anything like that. This is just strictly tinders and different fire starting things. So that's, this is not like fire steels and like lighters and that stuff. This is just uh, the tinders and such. <clears throat> so that's my top essential and that is for practicing firecraft. Firecraft is the thing for bushcraft. It is the absolute top thing for bushcraft and it kind of is what holds all of bushcraft together and it also holds pretty much all of survival together because fire offers so many different things from boiling and purifying water to giving you comfort and protection by night and also light <clears throat> it's the most important thing so that's my top thing so next to that is the container now once again this isn't a particularly important on what container i do like bottles or i do like pots over generally bottles but i kind of like to run both personally i really like these vargo bots now this is a titanium bot but they make a stainless steel bot which is pretty affordable and honestly like i said i really like the bot because it is a bottle and a pot so it's still large enough to cook from but yet it seals up like a bottle and you can take a day's amount of water or even a couple days amount of water 
seal it up and you can still drink from it like a bottle but then if you need it as a pot it also doubles as that <clears throat> anyways i'm not particularly picky but just having a container a watertight container or having a container that you can cook in or boil water in is very important for the bush crafter because once again it goes back to playing with fire craft you kind of need it for boiling water and also it's really nice for making things like coffees and other drinks like that so <clears throat> nextly is a tarp some type of shelter or protection now once again this is you know fancy little ugq winter dream 11 tarp but you can even go with as basic as a drop cloth kind of tarp like the one that I have all my gear sitting on right now it can be very basic or it can be a little bit more complex I like for me a tarp just needs to be pretty lightweight it doesn't have to be it just needs to be pretty lightweight it doesn't have to be super lightweight and it has to be waterproof for me I don't like anything that will not hold out the water <clears throat> and once again this is going to be playing a role as shelter so you can see that these are extremely practical things uh, to have in your backpack. So then next to that is <clears throat> paracord. Paracord is one of those things that like, it's commonly referred to the duct tape of the cordage world. Uh, this stuff is tough. It has lots of different cores, many, many, or it has these different strands that can be used to make many different things. Great stuff paracord is almost indispensable nowadays so having a little hank of this stuff on you it's easy to carry and it really helps so then lastly for me is a reliable and solid water filtration system whether it's tablets or if it's some like my platypus gravity works two liter or this little aquamira frontier max whatever it is <clears throat> just having a really good solid reliable um, water filter that can filter a lot of water really fast something like this carbon one is what I personally prefer and they're just I just really recommend that because once again it goes back to having a solid system of drinking and being able to just overall live so uh, lastly I guess what I two mics considered essentials I would recommend a bandana because these things have a million and one uses you can use them as filters you can use them as bandages you can use them for breathing you can use them for a ton of different things really great and bandanas just awesome <clears throat> so that kind of completes my top tier things those are like the essentials for the backpack and if you notice they're all really small they're all really lightweight and so I think that's what I like most about it. And <clears throat> these are the types of things that will fit in pretty much every single backpack. So there's really no excuse whether you're carrying a small little uh, sling pack or whether you're carrying some big backpack like this guy. Uh, you can fit it, all the things I just mentioned into that. You should be able to. So now getting into the larger list. So for me, other things that I would consider not necessarily critical, but really important and what I try to have on me, uh, depending of course on what exactly my goals are for bushcraft, go in the order of a first aid kit. I like having just a solid first aid kit, not for little boo-boos and scrapes and little cuts. We're talking for really deep flesh wounds or stuff that's really bad that needs serious help if you get a burn if you get a deep cut if you get something like that i'm talking about a serious first aid kit and because the things we do as bushcrafters and the things we play with can really hurt us <clears throat> so then next to the first aid kit i like having a solid sleep system because i agree with some other bushcrafters out there that it's nice to do all these survival and bushcraft uh, tasks when you're well rested as opposed to getting just a few hours of really really sucky sleep so once again I recommend a just a solid shelter system so next to that is two kind of two things that are similar in function and that is a saw solid saw it doesn't have to be a folding saw like this it can be a fixed saw but just some type of good solid saw like this big boy or even gigom boy something smaller 
but just a really effective saw is highly recommended. So then next to that is a solid axe and something like this doesn't have to be huge, it can even be a hatchet, but just a small axe or a hatchet, decent sized hatchet, just a really solid tool for cutting and processing lumber and your larger pieces of wood. That definitely should be something that's added to the backpack. <clears throat> <clears throat> Lastly, but certainly not least, is something like a good ferro rod, a good solid ferro rod for starting fires. Now, the reason why some people may be asking, why did I put a ferro rod at the last of this list? And that's because one thing you didn't see was knives on that list, and you didn't see, like I said, ferro rods until the very end. And that's because I believe some things should really be kept on Something should really be kept on body, things like knives, ferro rods, and other really critical components to living. And that's because whenever you do have a backpack, you do always run that risk of potentially losing the backpack, whether you set it down and you just can't find it, or whatever happens to it, and you don't have that backpack. <clears throat> that can mean that you that means you can lose all of this so it's really important to have the downright critical things like i said such as a knife because the knife because the knife can help every with every single aspect shelter water fire this can help you do it all so that's why i like to keep and make sure that the knife is on body and not in a backpack and like i said having a backup ferro rod to your main ferro rod that should be carried on your body somewhere is how I generally approach that situation. Anyways guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this and <clears throat> hopefully this will help kind of give you the key components to setting up a bushcrafting backpack. That's kind of what I'm going for here, not necessarily trying to rewrite any rules or anything like that, but just give you guys a good foundation of how to set up your backpack for bushcrafting. Anyways guys, God bless and I'm out.